So here we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator for a quick look at the M Scenery Douglas A4 Skyhawk uh, which has just been released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're interested in this thing you can find it on Sim Market uh, and it costs uh, a little bit just shy of 17 euros. Now if you're not that familiar with this developer I think it's fair to say that they've got a let's say less than stellar reputation uh, and by that uh, what I mean is that not that long ago they released a F-18C Hornet for Microsoft Flight Simulator which is not particularly brilliant if you go and check the reviews on uh, on Sim Market um, you'll uh, you'll see what I mean um, and if you look at some of the sceneries that they've done they get somewhat mixed reviews as well um, but this thing's just been released and I thought well let's give it a look you know if, it, you know, if people are, uh, see it on Sim Market and they're tempted by it I thought I'd give you a bit of a preview of what the thing looks like so straight off the bat we can see that it is actually quite a nice model of um, of a Skyhawk um, it's not particularly brilliantly textured um, and this is the only texture that you get with it however um, texturing is not that much of a problem with flight simulator add-ons because um, it's just a, just a case of doing a repaint um, so I'm not going to hold that against it too much um, in terms of modeling um, it is actually quite nice it's not super detailed um, but if we have a close-up look at it you can see the cannons are well modeled and the undercarriage is well modeled and stuff like that um, however there are some issues that I will point out with this this model um, first up um, the the A4 Skyhawk was um, one of the sort of early carrier jets and it didn't use the the, the sort of um, catapult system that more modern jet fighters use where there's a little thing that attaches to the uh, to, that attaches to the front wheel the sky uh, skyhawk um, used a, a much more complex um, catapult system you can see where I'm waving my mouse around there's a hook there um, and there would be one on the other side that we can't see uh, and so two big sort of like steel bars would come down um, and the, they sort of like attach to the, the catapult mechanism and what that would do is that would pull the entire thing forward and then the hooks, um, the, the, the um, stanchions that were attached to the hooks would drop away and that's the reason why um, a lot of, uh, of early carrier aeroplanes that used that system had sort of like quite a pitched up look to them um, if I if I come off that view you can see that it's got very very nose high attitude now when you actually see the real thing taxiing um, there's a lot of travel on the suspension and if you see a real one taxiing and someone applies the brakes it dips a lot um, on the suspension and what have you because it didn't have um, sort of ABS braking on it and what have you uh, so you had to be really careful on the real thing otherwise you could sort of like put a flat spot on the tyres and what have you so when you see these things taxiing people are sort of like gently dabbing the brakes and the nose is dipping a lot as the suspension compresses there is no compression model on the suspension of this thing so it looks a bit weird when you taxi and you slam the anchors on that the nose doesn't dip so that's one visual anomaly with the thing and it's not the only one unfortunately now another one I'll put it on this view here and what I'll do is I'll raise the slats now on the real um, Skyhawk the slats are not operated by a hydraulic system they're 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 free moving they droop automatically um, be because of their weight their gravity so if you actually uh, if you actually look at a Skyhawk on the ground a real one the slats are completely forward and down like that on the real Skyhawk and if you walked up to to one and you you gave it a shove they'd, they'd close um, because what they do is they they're held open by gravity um, and then when the plane speeds up to about 180 knots the airflow forces those things shut um, so they're, they're completely automatic there's no there's no sort of hydraulic or electrical system on them at all and on the real things they actually droop quite a bit more than that um, if you see photographs of the uh, of the real thing but that's not the real issue um, I can live with the fact that you know they're, they're sort of like linked to the the flaps on the thing um, the real issue is this um, I'm going to show you this 
um, it's an animation issue um, so I'll close the slats now have a look at this slat on the starboard wing i.e. the left side as we're looking at it, where I'm waving my mouse around and I'm going to open the slat and watch what happens with it the slat comes more or less straight forward um, doesn't move to the side much like that now have a look at the slat on the port wing i.e. where I'm waving my mouse around now um, when I lower this one can you see that that one's moving out to the side more like that it's not dropping straight forward so you've got a big gap there um, where you can see red and you haven't got that going on on there um, so there's an issue with the an issue with the animation that slat is moving forward and out and that slat's moving straight down um, now I'm pretty sure the real thing doesn't do that I think both slats um, just go straight forward um, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about that but I can't really see any reason why why the slats would be asymmetrical on it and as far as I'm aware that's an animation issue um, those as I say on the real thing um, they just droop automatically when there's no airflow holding them short um, the flaps however um, are split flaps on it now that's another animation that's missing from uh, this Skyhawk. On the real Skyhawk the flaps are indeed split flaps like that but this top part of the flap can also move up as a spoiler um, so when you operate the spoilers this, this top part of the split flaps moves up um, and they also have an air brake which is this panel here and one on the other side here um, and they don't operate at all um, so um, the spoilers are not correctly animated on this thing and neither are the, the slats. These things could be sorted out fairly easily and you would hope that the developer is going to sort of take that on board and tweak this thing a little bit. Um, but at the moment that's a bit of a problem. If problems don't stop there either. Have a look at the aileron here. Um, I'm going to raise the flaps so we can see where the aileron is sitting. Can you see that the aileron is pitched up on this side? Now let's have a look on the other side. It's pitched up on the other side as well. Now if I move the ailerons, I'm giving it full deflection there and the aileron never goes below the wing. And that's the same on the other side. So the ailerons are not sitting central with the wing. Um, they're both pitched up a little bit. You can see that when you look at them there. Both ailerons are up a little bit. Um, so the animation on that needs sorting out on the model. Um, to have those tilted down a little bit because that's not how they look on the real thing um, so um, texturing is is way too clean um, and needs a bit more detail on it and there are some animations that are either lack, lack lacking or need sorting out um, that's a bit of a problem um, how much you you want to live with that is entirely up to you another thing that isn't animated on it I'm less bothered about that um, is that the um, the tailplane um, on the real Skyhawk um, is a variable incidence tailplane and when you alter the trim on the thing the tailplane should be sort of very obviously moving up and down um, if you actually look on the Skyhawk it did have um, elevators um, that move that's correct but it also had a variable incidence tailplane uh, which moves very very noticeably when you alter the alter the trim on the real thing um, so a few issues with the external model which could fairly easily be sorted because um, as I say there is nice detailing on the on the guns and the lights are all in the right place and stuff like that um, I think these 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 drop tanks here should have tail fins on them on either side but you know I'm, I'm willing to be corrected on that there may have been some that didn't have um, have uh, have tail fins on them. The the um, the drop tanks on the real thing are quite ki in, kind of interesting. Um, the the Skyhawk had a refueling probe on it, but what it could also do was it could function as a tanker by um, filling both of those up, and then another Skyhawk could take off with not much fuel on board, but a massive bomb load, and another 
and, and a Skyhawk take off with these tanks full and then what it would be able to do is when they were both airborne it would be able to refuel the other Skyhawk that had bombs hung all underneath it and what have you and that meant that um, it would uh, it would be able to fly quite long strike missions um, with a full bomb load um, uh, or rockets or what have you. The thing was really a ground attack plane rather than a fighter but it could carry uh, sidewinder missiles um, and it could carry rocket launchers and all this kind of stuff and uh, uh, one of them in the Vietnam War actually managed to shoot down I think it was either a MiG-17 or a MiG-19 using unguided rockets um, which is um, an, an amazing feat but um, yeah the, um, the thing could actually dogfight if it wanted to um, and you probably know the, after the Skyhawk stopped being a, um, a main strike fighter within the US Navy and the US Marines, the, the US Navy still used it as an adversary aircraft at their Top Gun um, fighter training school. They used it as, um, to, as a stand-in for the MiG-19 and the MiG-21. So if you've seen the Top Gun movie, you've probably seen Skyhawks um, acting as adversary planes. Um, other air forces that used the Skyhawk, Argentinian Air Force used it in the Falklands War and were very successful with it, attacking a lot of Royal Navy ships. Um, less successful in air-to-air -air combat against uh, the RAF and the Royal Navy's Harriers, but as a ground attack airplane it was very successful. The Q-80s used it in the Gulf War. Um, they managed to get their Skyhawks out of Q8 when Iraq uh, went over the border and invaded it uh, and they um, based them in Saudi Arabia and did uh, ground attack missions with them. The Israelis um, used it in several wars and what have you and, uh, and did very very well air to air with it and air to ground. So this is an aeroplane that, uh, that was involved in a lot of combat and there were a lot of them built. There were nearly 3,000 of them built and there were a lot of them still around. Um, with private companies that use them for sort of uh, uh, dissimilar air combat training so you know the, the top gun schools might not be using these so much these days but there are a lot of private companies that offer the same service and they use Skyhawks to uh, to do that so this is a very very versatile aeroplane um, and it's amazing that it's still being used for that because uh, it was designed in the mid 50s first flight i think 1955 so that's a that's a very very long time getting on for 70 years and the thing's still uh, still sort of like um, flying and what have you um, but there you go uh, <coughs> anyway enough of that let's get the thing in the air and see what it flies like so um, when we get in the cockpit again the cockpit a nice model but not brilliantly textured however there are a lot of switches that work in this cockpit they don't necessarily do very much in the simulation but if you like flicking switches um, the vast majority of these switches do actually move um, all this stuff you can play around with it and what have you um, battery switches and all this kind of stuff um, all of these switches up on here most of the switches on the arming panel work like that the um, emergency jettison for the bombs works the um, the manual reversion for the the flight controls works if the, your hydraulics were hit all of this stuff works on here um, most of these switches down here on the radio work um, all of these light switches work all right, you can see all of those things moving so there are a lot of switches in the cockpit that actually function whether or not they do that much in the sim is another matter but you know if you like flicking switches in the cockpit um, that's pretty good um, none of this stuff on the joystick works um, but uh, you, you wouldn't really expect that to to be honest anyway the um, let me let me see if I can remember what these things are on the real real thing um, that's the bomb pickle switch <coughs> on the real thing um, that is the the slew control for the cursor on this MFD that was um, for the the walleye missile which is if you're not familiar with the walleye missile that was the kind of precursor to the maverick um, you could sort of like steer the TV screen with that thing um, so that was what that thing was for that is a trim control um, if you moved it um, left or right it trimmed the ailerons and if you moved it up and down it trimmed the elevators uh, and that is an autopilot disengage switch uh, and the autopilot is back here with all the switches on it. Uh, I've tried it with the external Satec Logitech uh, autopilot. It um, it does appear to function with that. Um, so you know if you've got one of those, uh, 
you can probably use that with it. Um, so, uh, things that don't work that probably should. Um, all of the, the all of the sort of engine gauges work on the thing, um, and the radar altimeter works, and these artificial horizons work, and the airspeed indicator works. This altimeter doesn't work bizarrely, uh, which is a bit annoying that the altimeter doesn't work. So that's something that they need to tweak. But you know the compass things and stuff like that work. But it's, it's a bit bizarre that the altimeter doesn't work. But as I say, you've got a radar altimeter there, and that does function. Um, so quite a bit going on in the cockpit. Um, as I say, could do with a bit nicer texturing on it. But other than that, that kind of works. So there you go. Um, anyway, let's take off, shall we? So off we go, and this thing accelerates pretty quickly. And then we're up in the air. Now, gear animation is a bit on the speedy side. <coughs> but it is correct in the way that it's animated. Um, there is a slight issue that you sometimes get with this, which is that you can have a problem where I found that sometimes the gear won't come down. Um, but it appears to only be a very occasional issue. Um, interestingly, um, that's less of a problem with this airplane than it would be with any other, because the real Skyhawk um, genuinely was designed to be able to belly land on those drop tanks. Um, you could actually, if, you, if your hydraulics were damaged and you couldn't lower your gear in a Skyhawk, um, what you could actually do is you could come in for a landing on those drop tanks uh, and they were designed to be able to take uh, the impact of a landing and you, it was actually possible, if you were really gentle, to land a Skyhawk without the gear lowered on those drop tanks and do absolutely no damage to the aeroplane at all at worst you might damage the the fuel probe a little bit or maybe that little antenna on the bottom of the nose but other than that you know this thing could be uh, could be belly landed so that's kind of interesting so if for some reason you can't get the gear down in the sim um, then you can have a go at trying that um, and, and uh, see how you get on with it um, now the real thing because it was used as an adversary aircraft at Top Gun there's a pretty good reason for that and that is that it's incredibly manoeuvrable and um, and got very very good acceleration the real thing I think has a roll rate of I think it's something incredible it's like sort of 650 700 degrees a second roll rate on on the Skyhawk now this thing doesn't roll at that rate I'll, uh, I'll throw it into a roll and you can see that there is nowhere near 700 degrees per second the real Skyhawk um, which is straight round um, this thing not really doing that um, but it does fly nicely you know and when you get it at low level you can kind of have a bit of fun with it so if you like sort of screaming across the the terrain at low level and there you go um, kind of nice There, what well, we're passing over there, by the way, um, the the bridge that we're we're coming over, the the furthest one away from me, the one that I'm just coming up on now, that um, is one of the most famous targets in the Vietnam War. That is the Paul Dumer Bridge um, at Hanoi, um, which is the city that you can see there. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's a target that this thing in the Vietnam War would genuinely have been attacking. Um, the Americans tried very very hard to to knock that bridge out. Um, they did did hit it a few times and damage it quite a few times um, because it was one of the main routes from Hanoi to Haiphong Harbor um, for getting supplies into North Vietnam. Um, interestingly, um, it's the Paul Dumer Bridge because it, that was the the the, the governor of. Uh, Vietnam when it was a French colony, so it was named after him. Uh, of course, after the the Japanese got kicked out after the Second World War, the French um, tried to get Vietnam back, uh, and that's when the um, the Viet Minh and the Viet Cong went, uh, uh, not a chance, um, and that was kind of like the start of the Vietnam War, which the um, the Americans then subsequently got involved in. But interestingly, you know, um, 
time moves on and um, and people make peace and the Paul de Mer Bridge is uh, now being refurbished um, with funds from the French to help uh, help the Vietnamese so that's kind of cool um, because uh, it, it had a lot of repairs done over the years because uh, the US kept bombing it <laughs> in the Vietnam War mostly with F-105 Thunder Chiefs not uh, not Skyhawks like this um, but um, yeah that was uh, that was one of the um, one of the places that they attacked a lot that bridge there um, so if you like your history um, this is kind of a nice plane to have um, and if you're prepared to live with the the visual anomalies uh, that I've pointed out there then it's it's not bad however you'll notice that there is another issue with it which is there's no pilot in the cockpit <laughs> um, so there are a few things that this thing needs sorting um, and so until they are sorted it's kind of difficult to recommend it um, I bought it because you know like obviously you know I do reviews and you might have seen it and thought oh that looks pretty good um, and I wanted to point out that there's, uh, there's quite a few issues with the thing um, because I'm quite interested in the Vietnam War and the airplanes that were in the Vietnam War um, I'm sort of like prepared to tolerate a lot of them and I would hope that the developer um, decides to um, to have a have a go at sort of making this a bit better than it is at the moment I think a repaint um, which I'm going to have a go at would would go a long way towards helping it out a little bit because this is currently the only livery that it comes with uh, so you're sort of stuck with it and there are a lot of nice paint schemes that you could put on the Sky Raider you could uh, Skyhawk I should say um, Sky Raider was the 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 airplane that this was designed to replace um, the, there's sort of Top Gun adversary schemes those sort of multi-toned blue colors that Sukhoi 27s and 35s are painted in um, with sort of spurious Soviet markings and uh, you know you've got the uh, Israeli camouflage paint schemes um, which are kind of nice the three-tone Israeli camouflage and then you've got um, the the Armada paint schemes of the um, the Argentine Air Force um, and then you've got um, Q80 paint schemes and stuff like that so um, yeah um, lots of lots of interesting paint schemes that you can have for this thing so let's see if the gear comes down this time shall we there we go see not that much of a problem uh, we get some flaps down and there's the uh, the runway in front of us I don't think uh, there would have been many Skyhawks landing at an airport base in the middle of Hanoi <laughs> in, in the uh, the mid to late 60s um, but you know since we're here and you want to see what this thing's like for landing um, it's kind of fun this is really where you need um, the spoilers and air brakes to be working unfortunately you have to kind of rely on the flaps to do all that um, which isn't ideal um, but you now as you'll see if you get on like chopping the throttle quickly enough you can get it slowed down for a landing oh uh, the other thing um, since it was a Navy fighter and a carrier sorry Navy strike aircraft um, and intended to operate off carriers um, although there's an arrestor hook on the model um, I can't find any way to lower it which seems a bit crap so um, you know that's another thing that they probably should sort out get the arrestor hook working on the thing now um, the reason that I can't figure out a lot of that stuff is because the manual for this is embarrassingly bad um, it is literally a notepad file that sounds like the gears collapsed there oh, guess not that really did sound like I'd come down on the gear um, the, the manual for this thing is a tiny notepad file that has an email address on it for support and an instruction to tell you to put this in the community folder when you're installing it and that's it that is literally the shortest manual I've ever seen in my life um, and there are uh, you know there's there's 
like that's that's it for documentation. And there's a few other other minor issues with some of the some of the sort of other bits of checklists and stuff like that. Like it comes with the DA62 checklist, um, which is just plain lazy. Um, so not without its issues, but um, kind of fun. However, you know there are free jets that you can get. Like for example, if you go to flightsim.to, um, there's a uh, a freebie alpha jet that you can download which is uh, which is kind of fun um, and that has a working smoke system on it so if you're just interested in a jet for your Microsoft Flight Simulator and you don't want to spend any money that's probably a better bet if you're into sort of like history and you want uh, Vietnam and um, Falklands War and Gulf War era um, jet plane to mess around with that's kind of nice and would look good with a lot of paint jobs then uh, if you're prepared to put up with the visual anomalies on the thing it's still um, a, a kind of nice thing to have but it's, it's difficult for me to recommend it at this point um, with those visual issues on, on the thing um, if they sort that out um, it that would be a different story um, if you're prepared to put up with all those sort of like things that are pointed out then yeah go for it but at the moment I've got to be honest and say do I recommend it? No um, it needs work before it can justify that uh, 16 euros and 80 cents i.e. just shy of 17 euros price tag um, if they uh, if they banged it out for a tenner you could probably tolerate it but I think they're a bit over the odds with that um, but you never know they might sort the thing anyway that was it just a very very quick look at the thing um, just to sort of um, they just to sort of show you they have said the developer has said that they're gonna tweak the sounds on the thing I don't think the sounds are that bad on it to be honest <coughs> but they have said that they're gonna put more realistic sounds on the thing that remains to be seen if they, I think, you know, if they um, if they put a bit more effort into this, it could be quite nice. At the moment, it looks to me, it comes across like something that's 80% through its de development process. Uh, and if they do the last 20%, it could be pretty good. But at the moment, difficult to recommend. Anyway, that's it for this um, quick shot view, uh, Chuck's Hanger. Um, if you're interested in it, it's available on Sim Market. Um, and it's uh, the developer is um, M Scenery. Um, so uh, yeah, check it out if you uh, if you're prepared to put up with those um, those anomalies. Anyway, that's it for um, those anomalies. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye.